Okay, let's see one REST API example together with uh, Node.js. So if you'd like to have a more maintainable code, we can uh, create the following uh, structure. In our main directory, we can have index.js uh, file. It will be just for bootstrapping our application. Then this file will be lo loading our routes, which will be inside of the file routes.js. The route's goal is to redirect the user-provided path to our controller, so they will load up our controller uh, file. And the structure of the controller can be inside of the directory controllers. So we'll have a subdirectory controllers and then the name of our uh, controller, let's say user controller. As for the modules, they can be inside of the directory modules and then let's say user model. Those modules will be used from our controllers. And this way we are forming a connection between the routes, the controllers and the modules. And in our case, if we have a request towards API, for example, user, and then the first user as a parameter, this request will be handled by the routes. They will pass the data to the proper controller. Then the controller will contact the module and the module will be connected with the database. We will return the data to the controller and from the controller, the data will go to the client who has requested the information. It might be a browser, it might be another API, a third part service for testing such as Postman or any extension for composing API requests. Requests can also be performed by command line tools such as curl. Okay guys, we'll explore two types of requests, one post and one get. We'll start with a get request. We're trying to get into the path of user get and then a one. In order to handle this, our application first uh, bootstraps itself using the index.js file. Basically, this will be the file which will start with node, node index.js. So first, uh, we are trying to import the express for handling uh, get and post requests and actually serving our application. So we are creating our application using the express function and uh, then here are our routes. In order to pass this file into the index, we are importing them first uh, here. And then we are sending our application as a parameter to the routes function in order to extend the application routes. And let's take a look at what uh, routes.js is doing. So we have one exported function which can be used in our index.js uh, file by first importing it and then using it. This function is accepting the parameter app, which is our application. And then we are creating one route. And first we are starting with slash user, and then we are trying to capture the information afterwards. So if our request is slash user slash one, one will be saved inside of this parameter user ID here. This route user slash and the number of the user can accept post and get requests. We are interested in the site of the get request and how we will handle it. So we have the request and the response passed from the route and we choose just to send to the user certain kind of data via JSON format. In the case of post, we are using our user controller and especially the add new user method of the user controller. Now, in order to use it, first we need to import it. So we are importing the user controller here from controllers user controller. And then let's take a look of what this function at new user consists of. So first we are exporting it in order to be able to import it into routes.js. Then we are given access as a parameter to the request and we are able to send a response. In case we are using a get request, 
we can find our parameters sent inside of the rec.params and then with a dot we can list all the parameters which are sent to this controller. This user ID here that we see is exactly the user ID that we captured via our route and uh, that's how Express is handling the routes. It's uh, capturing the parameters and then we can retrieve them using rec.params. the name of the parameter. Okay, now for the post request. As you can see, most of the things are similar. Again, we are importing our user controller. The difference is that we are handling the route using dot .post here, and we are accessing the information from the post request inside of the rec.body and then the name of the parameter that is sent via the body object. So in case of post, the whole controller is doing the following. It grabs the user ID, which is passed from the request, and it forms a response. And the response is sent via the JSON method to the requesting party. As you can see, most of the business logic is performed inside of the user controller. It can also connect to database and perform queries returning relevant results.